Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Tonight, we're going to make some sanding sticks. These are going to be a little bit different than, well, anything else I've seen on YouTube. Something that I came up with a while back and I've used off and on over the years. And I uh, decided that I needed to make myself some new ones, so I thought I would share that with you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now these are just a little bit different. I use a 3 8 dowel, a piece of foam, and I put Velcro on the outside of it. That way, if I want to sand the side of something, I can just wrap me a piece of sanding paper right there, come around inside, and I've got that where I can reach right up on the inside of something and sand out the middle. Now, if I need to get up inside something and I need to sand the bottom, I'll just take these discs and basically cut in about, oh, three quarters of the way in on all four sides and then split the difference in each one. So it gives me eight cuts. I can put my sandpaper on there and then just start folding it over. Each one going on top of the one that goes in before it. What that does is create an overlapping disc. So when you put that up in there, the lathe's turning this way. It's pushing down on those and you reach right up to the bottom. Now this is a large one. The one we're getting ready to turn now, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. We're going to do it a little bit different. Let me show you what I make these out of. I'm sure everybody's seen the little corner pieces that uh, folks pack stuff with. You find these on a lot of different products and they're fairly simple, easy to come by. Some are white and some you'll see are black. I don't think it really matters. I've had some that I've done out of the white foam. It worked just as well as the black. But this is pretty stiff foam, okay? It's, it's not real pliable, so that's what you're looking at. Something that has just a little bit of uh, resistance to it when you're mashing on it. I take those and I take cut this flat piece off and that gives me two of these L's. Once I've got that, then I can just come in with a pocket knife, a knife, a band saw, and I'm just going to cut off a piece of that. Once I've got that piece cut off, I'm going to come in with a knife and just make a slit right down the middle both ways. So basically I just made a slit and a slit. At that point I'm going to take my dowel and just stick it in there. Now we're good to this point except the dowel's not going to stay on there. I use the E6000 adhesive and what I'll do is I will stick it down in there like so and just kind of fill that hole up, bring it out and put a little bit right there on the top and then I stick the dowel back in there and I let it set for 24 hours. By letting it set for 24 hours it gives it plenty of time to set up and you don't have to worry about it coming loose on you. Now one word of caution here. Whatever dowel size you use, make sure you've got a method of chucking that up in your lathe, okay? Kind of funny, I did a small one. Thought, you know, that'll be a little smaller. I'll use a little smaller dowel. I forgot about that. Make sure you got a, something to chuck it up in your lathe. So I'm going to have to pull out the collet chuck to be able to turn this one because it's a 5 16ths inch dowel and my pin jaws will only go down to 3 8 This is a 3 8 dowel and you will see as I put this in here there is no room left when I crank it down it's holding it but if it was just a little bit smaller, it would not. So on this one, we're going to make it not as big around as we did on this one. Just so we've got something different. I don't think I've got to worry about foam flying up in my face. 
but we're going to go ahead and put the uh, face shield on anyway. It's just a good practice to do so. So again, we've got this chucked up in the lathe, 3 8 dowel, the foam from a packing corner on a packing material, glued in with E6000 glue. I will put links to the uh, E1000 in the uh, comments below. As a matter of fact, as you go into comments, you'll notice more and more links. I have joined Amazon Affiliate. If you go in, you click on something, or if you go in, you buy something, it's, I get a little bit of commission. It helps the channel a little bit to kind of cover some of the cost. If you want to help the channel out, please go down and look at the links. There may be something down there that might interest you, and the good thing is it doesn't cost you a penny more to get it through the link than it does to go straight to Amazon. We're going to go ahead and turn it up. Now we're going to turn this with a skew. This is when you want to make sure your skew is sharp. Okay. It will cut this off so clean. I'll just show you. You see how clean that cuts. And that's, that skew is sharp. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bring this down quite a bit. Like I said, we want this one to be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna taper this back. So we'll just go in like so. Again, we'll just make sure this end is rounded over. I don't like that so much. Let's try it again. Okay, now that we've got that done, this is fairly simple part. So we're going to use Velcro. And we're not using the soft side or the loop side. We're using the hook. And what we're going to do on this one, so we're just going to start up here with the Velcro. This is self-adhesive Velcro. Mash it down real good. Come right around the end of it. Bring it back. And again, we're just mashing it down real good. Make sure we get a good stick there. And we'll take our scissors and cut that right off. Okay, now that we've got that done, we can come right back in here with another piece of Velcro right here. Again, take our scissors and cut it off. Make sure you mash it down good. Do the same thing over here on this other side. Now, one caution I will give you on this. Before you start pulling and taking sandpaper on and off of this very much, I would give it 24 hours to sit there and really for that adhesive to set and hold. But let me go ahead and take it out of here and show you exactly what we've created. So we have a stick, 
Make the handle as long as you want. Somebody's going to ask me exactly how long the handle is. Heads up, I didn't measure it. I don't know. Put it in my hand and said, okay, I want it to go in about that far. And that's how long we cut the, the dowel. So we're going to be doing a goblet here in just a day or two. I will use this to sand the inside of the goblet. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and take that right there. This is a three eight or a three inch sanding disc. I'll wrap it around just like that. And that will go right up in there and sand the sides. If you want this to fold over, all you have to do is come in, make you a few cuts in there. And guess what? It folds over and now you can get right up in there and sand the bottom of that. And when you get done using your 180 grit and you want to go to 240, you just peel this right off, grab you a three inch 340 and you do the same thing. Folks, this is just a real quick tips video. We'll be doing more of these as time goes on. There's so many things that I want to share with you folks. Some of them are this. I've also got some bandsaw uh, jigs that I want to share with you. Coming up here in a week or two, I'll share this device right here, which will stop you if you use it. It'll stop you from ever going through the bottom of another bowl. Just useful tricks that I think everybody could use, stuff that's helped me and I think will help you. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.